go, here we go, here we go. Scenes like this one play out at Central Florida trauma centers every day. Emergency 911, you're on recorded line. This is Laura. Yeah, I, I, somebody just told me there's a shooting. There's people running out of my building at work. When there's been a shooting or an accident. Fire rescue. Hey, we need an ambulance. This foot got hit in the boat propeller. And it was off. Time is of the essence. This was an update. We have a 15-year-old male with a left leg amputation, several right toes on the right leg, and a large puncture wound to the back. And more often than not, immediate blood transfusions can mean the difference between life and death. It was really weird for me because when I saw all the blood and everything, I kind of thought I was a goner. Nate Winters thought he was going to die on Lake Maitland in the summer of 2008. He fell off a boat, was run over by its propeller, and lost 80% of the blood in his body. My whole body was just numb and it felt like I just got hit in the head like a baseball bat. And then I picked my right leg up out of the water and my toe was hanging off just like by like a string. And then I picked my left leg up and there is a, um, my femur is just sticking right out and there's just blood all around me. He needed a transfusion fast. They gave him five units of O-negative blood almost immediately, and that's what really saved me. O-negative blood is universal, which means it can go to anyone. It's often used by trauma patients like Nate when there's no time to determine a patient's blood type. O-negative is a stopgap, and it's a true lifesaver. The use of O-negative blood allows us to be effective and efficient and very rapid in our response uh, to the patient's needs. Dr. Peter Pappas is a trauma surgeon at Holmes Regional Medical Center in Melbourne. Pappas says the first hour after traumatic injury is known as the critical or golden hour. Getting patients the blood they need during that window is crucial to their survival, and Pappas depends on O-negative blood to be at his fingertips. Pappas transfuses patients with their own blood type once it's been determined, but this can take anywhere from several minutes to an hour, and he can't let those precious moments slip away. For the average trauma patient, uh, if they need blood, it can range anywhere from a unit or two to keep them stable, say if they're bleeding from lung bone fractures like a femur, or it could be several units or several dozen units for very serious injuries to the internal organs, fractured pelvis, or, or very serious injuries to the chest. Why can O-negative blood go to anyone? Well, human beings have four different blood groups, A, B, AB, and O. A and B are antigens found on the surface of the red blood cells, which can either be positive or negative. But if you have O negative blood, your blood does not contain any factors or antigens. So their blood can go into an A person, and the A person doesn't see anything different because there is nothing there that's unusual to them. That A or that uh, O blood can go into the B person because, again, the B person does not see anything unusual about that group O blood and the same with an AB person. People with O-negative blood may be able to give life to others regardless of blood type, but when it comes to being a recipient, no other type of blood will do. I had to sleep sitting up because if you lay down, congestive heart failure is fluid building up in your lungs, and when your lungs get filled up, you can't breathe. So that's when I knew I had issues. Randy Bragg desperately needed a heart transplant. Since he has O-negative blood, he needed a heart from an O-negative donor. Doctors found a match within six months, but this was far from the end of the road. After about five or six hours of trying to get the heart to pump, it just, they just gave up. So they put me on bypass machine to keep me alive, and you know, just have the, the blood pumping through my heart, just keeping me alive until hopefully they would they would find another heart. I mean, to find another heart with O negative blood was rare as it is to you know to get in six months. Because they were telling me it, it could have been two or three years to find a, an O negative heart. Randy beat the odds once again. A second heart came through within hours, and he miraculously received two heart transplants on the same day. Randy relied on 29 units of O negative blood to sustain life during his 18 and a half hours on the operating table. You can get a heart, but without the blood, you're 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 not doing very well. So I think the blood is the, probably the most important part um, of the whole process of the surgery. Only 7% of the population has O negative blood, and that's why it's so crucial for these donors to roll up their sleeves regularly. We usually like to have somewhat like 50 units on the shelf to be able to distribute quickly to hospitals. If you look right now, it looks like I got, well, five. If there's no blood on the shelves, there's no blood at the hospitals. One of his biggest obstacles right after it happened was the need for blood. 
Um, he lost a lot of blood in the accident. When Kim Roberts' son Jacob was involved in a lawnmower accident, he needed immediate blood transfusions to sustain life. He had um, significant damage to his face. Um, he lost a portion of his left jaw. Um, he also had, he lost almost all the tissue from the left side of his face. Um, he also had to have um, some, a lot of work done on his arm. He lost half of his left hand, all of the fingers on his left hand, and a portion of the bone in, in his lower arm on the left side of his body. Trauma patients and O-negative patients aren't the only ones in need of O-negative blood. The littlest among us rely on O-negative blood to sustain life outside the womb. Premature babies often develop anemia or other health problems that require an immediate transfusion of O-negative blood. In a situation like this, in which the baby's life depends on a transfusion, I don't have the baby's blood type and I don't have O-negative blood, that baby is in big trouble and, 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 and has a very high chance of dying. What would happen if the blood wasn't there? Sadly, not good things. I think a lot of people would die. So why don't more people donate? Many say they've never been asked or they didn't realize the need was so great. Even Randy admits he never gave blood before his miraculous heart surgery. But as soon as doctors gave him the go-ahead, he rolled up his sleeve at Florida's blood centers. There's no, there's no excuse, really, not, not to give blood. I mean, you sit there for 10 minutes, um, and you're, you're, you're helping someone's, you know, someone's life. I mean, I think, I think for every unit of blood, you're helping probably three, three um, people's lives. So it's pretty much a no-brainer. And to the people who receive the blood, it truly is the gift of life. A lot of people are saying Nate's amazing and Nate's a hero, and he really is. There's no question of going back. But you know, a lot of the real heroes were also the people that um, gave the blood. You know, there's people that will never know who they are, but they saved a 15-year-old kid's life and have given him a chance to be hopefully a very productive member of society and hopefully help other people too. They're like angels to me. Without them, I wouldn't be here, so thank you a lot. And the people that do it, you know, I would see, you know, I've donated five gallon, you know, you see people wearing shirts or, and I think it's a fantastic thing. I, you know, you always hope that you never have to be on the receiving end of it for yourself or, you know, of course, any of your children. But, you know, luckily for us, there are people out there that do it on a regular basis. The donors that donated before he even had the accident, um, clearly those are the ones who saved his life. People who didn't know about Jacob, people who didn't know that this was going to happen to him, they're the ones that were able to save his life because they just did what they normally do. They saw the big red bus or they saw um, an, an ad somewhere or they just have a, a routine that they donate blood whenever they can. Um, the units of blood that the Florida Blood Centers already had, those were the units of blood that saved his life.